Hello and welcome to our One Year Bible Devotional. I'm so glad that you're tuning in and joining us. You know, the beginning of the year is so crucial and critical to get into the Word of God and have a devotional life and be disciplined in the Scriptures. And so I appreciate so much you joining us for this. And if this is your first time or you've just recently been getting into uh, these video clips where we're doing some teaching, it's not meant to give you a full lesson at all, but it's meant to be a discussion starter uh, for you in the scriptures just to get something going and getting you involved in the one-year Bible reading in the devotional reading and then if you're with your spouse or family members that once this devotional is over you're able to then talk about it and discuss it a little bit to extract some more meaning in a very personal way for you for your life for your family so today we are in uh, Exodus chapter 19, it's February 3rd, one year Bible reading in the Old Testament, Exodus 19. Moses has led the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage and has come back to uh, the desert of Sinai to meet with God. God had instructed him to come back to this area. Uh, in today's reading, he meets uh, his father-in-law Jethro, and Jethro gives him some advice about how to carry on the work of the Lord so he doesn't burn out. But in chapter 19, there's a very interesting passage of Scripture that I want to read to you and then just share a few thoughts with you. Beginning in verse 1, Exodus 19, verse 1, says, In the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on the very day they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. All right, so here we have this, this encounter that uh, Moses has with God. Now, a lot of people, you know, they think that just that Moses went up on top of the mountain, received the Ten Commandments, and came down. That's not how it unfolded at all. Moses makes a couple of trips up to the mountain to meet with God, and on this uh, first occasion, it is very significant what God says to him. And I want to put it within the context of the visits that Moses had with God, because after this, and this will be in tomorrow's one year Bible reading. Moses goes up to the mountain and receives what we call the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words. Now, when you look at those at face value, and a lot of people that uh, aren't Christians, when they look at the Ten Commandments from face value, all they see are a list of do's and don'ts. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Make sure you keep the Sabbath day holy. Make sure that you honor your father and mother. Make sure that uh, you, know, you worship the Lord your God only. All, all that. So a list again of do's and don'ts. What they're to do, what they're not to do. But before they ever get that, God tells them who they are. And that's the title of this brief clip that I'm sharing with you today, Identity. He wants Israel to know who they are. Why is that important? Because they had been, as a nation and as a people, in slavery in Egypt for over 400 years. Okay? That's what they've grown up knowing. That's all the mindset they've had. I'm a slave. I do as I'm told. I go out. I do this. I have a quota to meet. I do this. I come home. I do this. The next day I repeat this. And I, I'm, I'm in slavery to another people. When they are out now, they've been, they've been out of Egyptian bondage now for 50 days. Okay? 
over 400 years enslaved, but now just 50 days removed, and they're being told something totally different. God is reshaping who they are. He is announcing to them a fresh vision for them as a people. And he tells them, he says to Moses, he says, I want you to tell them this. I want you to tell them that if they'll obey me, uh, first of all, let them understand it was me who brought them out of Egypt. I, I brought them out to bring them to myself. And if they'll obey me, then out of all the other nations, uh, they're going to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, a treasured possession, uh, and these are the words you're to tell them. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, it should, because Peter quotes it in 1 Peter chapter 2, when he says, you are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, his own special treasure. Where did Peter get that? From this passage right here. And what I simply want you to understand is this principle. Before God tells them what he wants them to do and not do, he tells them who they are. And this is significant. He's telling them because of who you are, because you're a treasured possession, because you're a holy nation, my own special treasure, you need to watch yourself and make sure you do this and not do this. Here are the parameters. Now, the reason that's critical is because, and those of you that are watching as a family today, I hope your young people are listening. I want to talk to the teenagers. I want to talk to the children for a minute and the teens. You know, sometimes mom and dad, they're going to tell you that you can't do certain things. I know when my kids were growing up, you know, they would ask, you know, can we go to this place? And we'd say, no, you can't do that. And they'd say, well, can we spend the night at so-and-so's house? No. We're not going to allow you to do that. Why? Because that family had some different values that we had. Not that we were different, not that we were better than they were at all. It's just we valued certain things that maybe that family didn't. We saw that as parents. And we told our children, listen, we're raising you to be leaders in the body of Christ. This is who you are. You're a special person to God and to us. And because of that, we're not going to allow you to go to certain places. We told our kids that all the time when they were being raised. I think what that did is it prevented them from being resentful to us, toward us as parents. That mom and dad were just tough and they were just, they wouldn't let us do this. They wouldn't let us do that. No, there's a reason. There's a reason. It's because you're a special child to us and to God. God has his hand on your life. God has anointed you and our family and we're wanting to preserve that. So this is why you can't do what every other young person does. This is why you can't do what every other child does because of who you are. If we'll understand this lesson and we'll get our identity straight, then it will make sense to us when God has things in his word in which he says, no, I don't want you to do this. No, you can't participate in this. No, you can't go here. You can't, you shouldn't be involved in this, but here's what you need to do. It's because of who you are. You're a child of God. You're a special person to God. He purchased you with the blood of Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. He's placed his Holy Spirit on your life. You are that special to God. So I want you to hear that today. Know you're loved, you're appreciated, and know that you have a special identity in the Lord God Almighty. Let me have prayer with you. Father, I want to thank you for every person watching. I hope and pray that this brief study makes sense to them. I hope, God, that you'll especially touch our young people and our children who are listening, that they will understand why mom and dad sometimes tell them they can't go here or do, go there or do this or do that. I pray, Lord, that they will understand and moms and dads will understand as well how precious they are in your sight. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. May God richly bless you.